Uh, I'll just get started. Um, there's been a lot of technical difficulties leading up to this, so I'm a little extra nervous. But this is my first time presenting at NASIS, my first time at a NASIS. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I'll be talking about making maps with Python. Uh, this is my information, and on the GitHub account, I'll share some of the examples. I'll update it later after, after the conference. Uh, so I'll just get started. Uh, okay, so who am I? You already mentioned my name, and I am a research associate at the Public Policy Institute of California. I research higher education in California, mostly about community colleges. Uh, it's 114 institutions. I think it's the largest system in the country. We have, it's 114 plus one, which has got a new online college that's gonna be interesting. Uh, you can learn more about some of the work that we do at ppic.org. And on my free time, I'm very interested in effective data visualization and democratizing knowledge. And I created this thing called Tacos de Datos, where me and many other people across the world spread this data viz and data analysis knowledge in Spanish, um, because it tends to stay in the English speaking world. Uh, so there's that, if you wanna learn more about that, uh, it's tacosdedatos.com. I wanna uh, give a special thanks, thanks to Lauren Tierney uh, that sent out this tweet in May uh, which led me to learn about NASIS. I didn't even know NASIS existed until May 13th at 3.44 p.m. <laughs> this year. And you'll notice that I'm not, uh, so I'm tagged uh, as Tacos de Atos. Uh, it felt like a special invitation, like just for me, even though I was one of the four people that, <laughs> that she tagged. But um, I just wanna make a point about diversity and just having this thing, and even in Spanish, just the CPF, having it in Spanish opens the doors to many, many more people being interested in cartography and being, learning about NASIS. Um, so just <clears throat> wanna give her a special thanks. Um, why would you wanna make maps in Python? You're all experts at making uh, maps in whatever tools you've been doing this whole time. Um, it's easy, especially it's becoming a lot easier in the past three to five years. If you learn Python 10, 15 years ago, seven years ago, it was a different story from what I hear. I didn't, I don't know. Uh, but it's becoming a lot more easier. And it's one of the, the easier languages, uh, programming languages to pick up, just as uh, R. Um, it's reproducible, so whatever code you, you create, uh, now uh, if you saw my, my GitHub account, you can throw it on GitHub and there's services like um, mybinder.org where you can link your GitHub account. You go to mybinder.org, give it the link to your GitHub account. It's gonna read the dependencies. It's gonna create a Jupyter environment online on your browser. You don't need to install anything. And then you, people can play around with the code that you created and the maps that you have created. So you just gotta set it up right and then anyone across the world with enough internet connection can play around with your code. It's shareable, just like I said in, in, in GitHub. And having a text file, that uh, .py file, that you can just send around, it's slightly easier to share than um, maybe some other mediums. It lets you iterate quickly, so you can play around with it, and because it's, it's fast in the sense that you change a line of code and it changes everything, and it creates small uh, incremental changes. And, it, and now with Jupyter, we'll, uh, you have an environment where you can explore and play around with the data in a lot easier uh, fashion. And Python is a fast-growing language, and it's a really, really nice community, uh, especially across many other programming languages, from what I hear. Uh, they try to be really inclusive, and they try to be really friendly to beginners. So there's that aspect, too. So in this presentation, I'm gonna talk to you about some open source Python libraries to create maps and analyze and play around with geospatial data, and I wanna highlight uh, these four. There's many more if you Google Python geospatial you're gonna have a huge list of, re of resources where you can learn. There's a lot of courses, there's a lot of uh, libraries, and at the end I'm gonna share some links about that, but I, want, but I wanted to highlight these four. Um, very first one, GeoPandas, and I'm rushing through because I wanna give some space at the end for Q&A, but if, if it's too fast, just let me know. Uh, GeoPandas allows you to play with geospatial, uh, geospatial data in most formats that you can think of, there's, uh, you can load, you can point it to a shape file, you can point it to a KML file, I've never played with those, with GeoJSONs, you can point it to a CSV file with Latin long and create 
points from that. It can create polygons and uh, it can manipulate your geographical data in a very uh, powerful fashion because it's based on pandas, which is the main data analysis library in Python. And what it's creating is it's loading up your data and it's create, putting it into what's called a data frame, which is essentially a table. And you can, because it's super optimized at the lower levels, you can do all types of data analysis and data manipulation in a very fast and, I think, intuitive fashion. And I'm gonna show you an example of how that would look like. Uh, very first line of code, this is uh, in a Jupyter notebook. Uh, I know there's other presentations later in this same track where they're gonna talk about a little bit more about Jupyter. There's, uh, it takes three lines of code to create a map, and we can talk about whether or not that's a nice looking map, but uh, it takes essentially three lines of code. You would import your package. Uh, that percentage, the second line of code, what it's saying is, please show me this matplotlib chart that I just created. Show it to me in the notebook environment. Don't save it somewhere in memory. I, I wanna see it, so display it. And this, it comes with some data sets included. So this is, I didn't have to look at a shape file. I didn't have to load a, a GeoJSON. I didn't have to download anything from anywhere. It already comes with this um, world uh, data set, and it includes um, GDP from, I don't remember exactly the year that it's, that it's supposed to be representing. But I uh, just wanted to, this, the point of this is just to display how it looks. It's a table, it's a data frame, that's what it looks like, and this is just showing you the first five rows. You can see at the very end, there's a geometry column. Those are polygons, and it can be the point, it can be lines, it can be um, polygon, like I said. And because this is in a table format and it's pandas under the hood, you can manipulate your data. You can dissolve into higher geometries and, and from municipalities to states, for example. You can add buffers around, you can uh, split up, you can find where things intersect, you can create joints and uh, geospatial joints uh, as well as regular data joints. And to display a map, to create a map with this uh, library, you only have to add dot plot at the end of your data frame and it's gonna show you a map uh, from your data set. It was gonna, illust it was gonna uh, display your polygons and your points. Um, it's highly customizable, this is just the default. Um, and it's all blue, uh, one of my colleagues here does not like blue for land, she says blue is for water, but this is the default. Uh, and it's simple, quick iteration if you wanna kinda just observe what kind of data you have and if it makes sense. Uh, second one is Geoplot, and what Geoplot is, saying, is doing is essentially making uh, nice looking maps quicker. It's on t it sits on top of Geopandas. It will create a map, uh, it has some uh, nicer defaults and it has uh, a lot of methods and functions already set up to create um, nicer looking maps. And this is the third day I'm here at NASIS and I've seen a lot of really nice looking maps so I don't think this is, any, this is nice looking anymore. So, but we can debate that <laughs> after that. Um, the, first, the first line of code uh, is just loading up the data sets and the second line of code is creating essentially two layers. I mean, the second cell is creating two layers. You're creating a polyplot, so display the polygons. That's uh, displaying the, the states, the outlines of the states. And the second one is creating a point plot. So it's just throwing all the points. And um, I just wanted to show, this is, it looks a lot more complicated, but I just wanted to show how customizable something is. Um, you can, have, uh, you can specify the legend, you can specify the cutoffs of the legend, you can specify the title of the legend, the title of the chart. You can, you can even specify the pixel where you want the chart, the title to be. You can uh, edit um, and manipulate this figure however you can imagine. Um, this is from outside in the gallery. Uh, I saw it after I had worked on these slides. And it says, what is one thing that you'd like to pass on to a newcomer in the field? And you might not be able to see it, but that post-it note says, do not use Web Mercator. <laughs> uh, I do use Web Mercator, I'm sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. But uh, this is exactly the same code 
as earlier, all you're doing is on that first line of the second uh, cell, you're changing it to web map instead of polyplot. And it will create uh, the base layer, and it just helps you contextualize. I just saw a talk about uh, whether we use base maps or not. Uh, and it gives you a lot of context. I, for example, I'm originally from Tijuana. And when I saw this map, I, was, I noticed a big uh, hole over here. And I was like, I don't know what's going on here. These are four-year institutions in the United States. Um, and I just don't know that state off the, off the top of my mind. And it turns out it's Wyoming. And now I can, I can see that. I can see what's going on there. And then I can look at my data set and be like, is it really that there's no universities in Wyoming? Or is there something wrong with the data? Um, Altair is not necessarily a map, uh, a mapping library. It's a statistical data visualization library, but it has some mapping capabilities. And because it's not for maps, uh, but, uh, essentially, just for maps, uh, it might not come up if you're looking to to display or visualize maps. If you Google some mapping visualization in in Python, but I wanted to highlight this because it's a very powerful library uh, because it uses what they call a visualization grammar. It's very newcomer friendly, and I'm just gonna show you how it would look like. With this, um, it has a data set, a GeoJSON of counties, and I'm specifying the mark uh, as a geo shape, and, and you could specify it as a bar, you can specify it as a point, and that's how you build on the grammar of graphics. And all you're doing is specifying the projection, some properties, and it creates, uh, I'm just gonna say that it's a nice looking map. Uh, we can, again, agree to disagree. Uh, and what's nice about Altair is that it's interactive by default because it's using JavaScript under the hood. And you can, just with one line of code, um, tooltip, that third line, you can specify what uh, columns of your data frame you wanna highlight on that tooltip. And it's, it's very useful for data exploration. OSM NX, uh, it's library, more than a, a visualizing library, it's, uh, it lets you download and analyze networks very easily. And it uses OpenStreetMap under the hood and NetworkX, a network uh, analysis library, which then gives you uh, a lot of things, a lot of powerful tools uh, to look at uh, places and look at highways, look at um, power lines, anything you can find in OpenStreetMap. And it, because it uses NetworkX under the hood, you can analyze it and you can find centrality of streets, you can uh, create routes, you can uh, find distances between points and you can create the best, the best plotting, the best route between points. And because it's using GeoPandas under the hood, you can save that route and you can save this network as a shape file, as a GeoJSON, as any other type that you might be, that you might want to export to some other software. And it's fairly easy to use. It literally, you import the package and then you specify a graph from place. And you sp I specified Hotel Morano, which is where we are. I asked for 2,000 meters across from Hotel Morano in walkable paths, and it provided me a graph of a 2,000 meter radius across here. So if you wanna go out for a two kilometer walk, this is as far as you could get. Uh, yeah, no, it's a, yeah, that's from it. And because it's using um, GeoPandas under the hood, this is, again, very highly customizable. You can specify all the colors, all the, the details that you might wanna specify. Um, in the abstract, I promised that I was gonna talk to you about where some of the social science people find their data. Uh, what, uh, one of the nicer places to find data is this place called IPUMS. It's from Minnesota. It's, they provide census and survey data from across the world, and they integrate it across time and space. So you can look at a specific variable, say marriage, uh, whether, where you're married or not. And a census or a survey, and they make sure that the that the answers, that the values match across time and space, and they won't, you can find the generalized version of yes, no, I was married at this point in time, 
or then you can go into the detailed version and then do some more creative analyses. And this is uh, from the very first one, NHGIS, which is also from IPOMS, the National Historical Geographic Information System, provides summary tables and time series of all US data from the US census, uh, all the way to block level. So census tracts, census blocks, uh, those are only in the ten and the decennial census, but because it's using also ACS or American Community Survey, those are yearly. Uh, you can find some really, really interesting data from the U.S. And their international section, IPOMS International, uh, has data from 98 countries, 443 censuses and surveys, and over 1 billion person records. So it's a very, very rich data uh, source, and it includes shape files, and they try to harmonize. Uh, these geographies across time. I won't get into that, I don't have a lot of time. And I just wanna share some resources uh, in, a, in one slide that you could take a picture of if you want. Uh, and thank you so much. I don't know if I have, there's a lot of time for questions, but thank you, thank you so much.